Many people in life are looking for how to make a living that's worth living and create a retirement that, of course, that is worth having. When we say these things, we're really looking at our true life, what is really going on in our relationships around us, and how those relationships either build us up to become all that the Lord has created within our souls to become, or they tear us down because they're not good for us. They think they have controls over us, or they feel that they have some rights to our lives, which underneath God's rules and the national uh, country's laws, they don't. What I mean is that we've got a lot of people here who are struggling with what's going on in immigration. I was really moved yesterday by reading an article that Marianne Williamson shared from a, a rabbi who was writing in the Tikkun newsletter. And of course, I've studied Kabbalah a bit, so I get the concept. I hadn't really thought about what the detention camps were like for people because that wasn't my focus. What I was really thinking about was if people come here illegally, and I mean truly illegally, meaning they have no paperwork, they have no st course of study, they have no reason for really coming in terms of legitimate uh, love interest or anything like that, then why are they coming here? Now, the article talked about how people were running from poverty. Well, there's poverty in America, too. They were talking about how they were running from out of fear of the warlords that are there. Well, we have our own warmongers here. So the reality is our nations are not so different. The only difference is that in general, Americans won't tolerate being manhandled. They won't tolerate being managed and inappropriately handled. For the most part, we prefer to have our lives in our control. We regard the laws of the land and we understand those laws because we were raised here. For those of us of my generation and older, we were raised with a certain sort of ethics, if you will. Our kindergarten classes taught us about how to literally love on other kids and be kind to them and share toys and do all the things that a loving child is taught to do. When I sometimes sit in a McDonald's on a regular basis, I go there regularly because the woman who runs the late shift is very kind. Not only is she kind to allow me to stay inside where it's warm when it's freezing cold outside, she totally gets the weather and understands how hard it is to get frostbite off one's hands once it's begun to set in. My hands have sort of blackened already from the numerous times that my own birth family has allowed me to stay out in the freezing cold, but yet a total stranger who runs a shift at a McDonald's right in the community in which I sometimes stay literally says, under no circumstances are you staying outside in that cold. And that's what a loving soul she is, and she represents her firm exceptionally well. Now, when I talk about this, I'm not asking for pity because my life came to this point because of a lot of reasons. I lost someone I really were imp important in my life in terms of a spouse. Then I lost the next two girls who were really important in my life in terms of my soul care and my ability to move forward in life and in business. And other people monkeyed around in those relationships and took over rights that they really didn't have. They really didn't have the right to go in and give them any advice on those relationships because they were not a part of those relationships. They could be easily maneuvered and easily manipulated is clear. They weren't not set in their stone within their hearts, minds, and souls. That The Lord had actually opened those doors for a reason between us. But in life, we have moments of time to continue on, and we have moments of time to help other people, and we have moments of time to show who we really are in the Lord's house, not to mention who we are within the laws of our great nation. You see, something that I've been noticing a great deal of with the foreigners, especially their children when they come here, is they have no regard for our life at all. They literally don't. Now, I don't mind when I see people in their beautiful, colorful, um, sorry, and other types of fabric clothing that celebrate their culture. I don't have a problem with people who honor their own religions and cover their head and cover their body so that only their husbands get that privy. That's quite an extreme version of propriety, but I get it. It makes sense underneath biblical law and other types of historic works that talk about how once a woman has gifted herself to a man that literally he's the only one who can gaze upon her and vice versa in general. That's the way it's supposed to be, that you give unto yourself to someone else and that's it. The commitment is made. The lifetime agreement is had. Now, when I talk about these things, you might have thought that I've sort of shift gears from what I began with, but that's not true. What I'm really talking about with regard to immigration is that we had parents from foreign nations 
who didn't decide to make an effort in their own communities. They didn't decide to stand tall in their own heritage. They didn't decide to go back to their own ethnic upbringings, their own racial fortitudes, or their own religious leanings. To simply stand tall to the warmongers there to say, I'm sorry, this is not the way that our nation is run. This is not the history of our land. This is not what our ancestors did. Now, certainly there was battles amongst different populations and peoples. And let's face it, we've studied the Incas and the Mayas and all those things in our own cultures in America. But the reality is we were studying other worlds away. What I'm talking about today is that when these children come into our communities, they are welcome and folded immediately. And only a few get into trouble when they start to yell and scream and celebrate the fact that the Twin Towers went down and the, that parent came in immediately and literally removed that child from that school. That was a story that one of my siblings told. But I guess what I'm saying is that in life we have moments of time to be something. And if we're going to remain in America, then we better know what the laws are here. We also better have a regard for religion because we came into America for that ultimate purpose, the ability to celebrate the Lord we loved in our own way, the ability to carry our own religious tools, our own religious, religious objects in our pocket. And in my case, they're all over me. I literally have something religious in just about every single pocket that I possess, and I pray I didn't lose anything today in trying to do some laundry. It's possible that I did, but who's to say? In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. If something is lost, and we know who is in the lavatory, then we need to remind them to double check or we need to go after them and say, hey, you forgot this here. Or we need to let people know that an item is available in the lost and found by posting a sign and saying, we have found X, Y, Z in the simplest of terms, like a telephone. We found a telephone. And if the person can come up and describe the telephone that they lost, then great. Then we found the owner. Or we do what a lot of smart people do is they look on the telephone very carefully, and not to be rude, but to find a, a phone number for a mom of some kind, if the phone doesn't have a name on it, where we call that mom or that dad or that relative that's obviously the relative, and we say, hey, would you mind telling so-and-so, first of all, would you tell us whose phone this is, and second of all, would you mind telling that person that their phone has been lost? And we've got it right here, safe and sound, their investment in their own telecommunications capabilities and their own right to have communications in the land. Now, when I'm talking like this, I'm really talking about the fact that foreigners do come here with their own technologies, with their own understandings of technology, and literally infiltrate our lives. They come in as companies wanting to help us. I regularly get these hits from India about, would I like them to take over my website? No, I would not. I like learning how to do those things. I've enjoyed that self-teaching process, and I've pestered the hell out of my domain provider for over the years to fix problems that seem to pop up every so often. And I learn in every exchange. And for the most part, they're pretty easy going about the whole thing. They celebrate their own understanding and their own wisdom, and they like sharing it with other people. And that is, in essence, what America is about, that we are a land of historic wisdom. And when people come here and don't know the rules or the regulations or the social mores or how to greet people, we gently say, you know, the men here do this to interact with one another. And obviously, women do something different when they're interacting with one another. Sometimes women want to sell to men, but they don't sell to the man's point of view. So I talk to people about how they need to sell in a different way. And that usually works once they start to try it. They're skeptical, of course, at first because they want to do things their own way. But we always have to look at, is it resulting for you? Now, someone might say the same thing to me. How is it that if you're so great in all these things that your, home, your, your entire life has gone to homelessness? That's easy momming. You see, this began long ago. It started with my telephone, where I wasn't getting all the abilities to make phone calls or all the ability, all the rights that I was paying for with a provider to ensure that I had service. Then my Twitter account, every single photo that I photographed in my Twitter account was utterly deleted. And I had hundreds of photos there that I put out there lovingly so for people who cared about me and people who liked what I was doing. I had no backups. On top of that, then came other issues, other things that went missing. And it was pretty obvious that it was my maintenance staff or the staff that worked at the apartment complex because, according to my own family, they don't have time to pill for those sorts of things. Now, that may or may not be true. 
But of course, are we going to be believe family, birth family over strangers? Probably. That doesn't necessarily mean that they can't lie. Now, when I talk about these real world relationships, I'm talking about the fact that in life, we have to have a triad, that triangle of people that help us to really propel our career and our job into something amazing because they raise us up and they believe in us wholeheartedly and they love us unconditionally. That no matter how great we do or how poor we sound or even looking back on some videos of myself, I go, wow, I've lost a lot of weight. And wow, I don't remember her sounding like that. But it's true. We mature. We time out of old ways of thinking and we come into new projects and new opportunities. So in life, we've got this time that we've got to manage and we've got these resources and talents we've got to structure for our own rights to go forward in life. But we never have the right to take away someone else's rights. And I guess that's what I've been talking a great deal about in the mayhem aspects of my Magic and Mayhem audio cast, that in truth, the mayhem is done by people and the magic is really provided by the Lord. And I've seen this time and time again over the years. That while people are like, how can you continue to go on after you've had every single resource bag that you carry for your own life, your own work, your own projects gets cut? Even as recently as this little pouch I picked up, a spalding pouch that I used to carry a tripod in, I took the tripod out, left it in storage because I have several tripods that I own, and openly I put in my chair. The next thing I know, I go to the Central Public Library and the corner of my bag has now been cut. I didn't get caught on anything. It's certainly nothing pointy that's being stuck through there. It's not a badly constructed bag because I always know how to buy a quality bag. So what the heck? There's somebody out there who thinks they've got the right to take out scissors or a knife and cut someone's bag. This is the 10th bag of mine that has been utterly destroyed by someone's scissors. Now, when I talk like this, I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about real hazing. I'm talking about real mobbing. I'm talking about the fact that there are monsters in this land who will call ahead of somebody and say, so-and-so is about to ride. Make sure you taint their food. Or so-and-so is about to ride. Make sure that you interfere with their beverages. And so-and-so is about to ride. Make sure that you destroy their rights online. You see, in life, we have moments of time to prove who we are in front of God's house. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not, but if you don't believe in God, there's a real issue because eventually you're going to go to God and you're not going to have any faith behind you to handle it. Now, when I talk about these things, you might say, okay, he's off his rocker, he's really lost it, and the answer is no, I haven't. I've decided to put what's first first and what's last last. And in my life, God is first. He is always first because he proves himself with the magic of the Lord every single time.